Hey guys, I'm Adam Haig from 3D Games and in this video I'll be showing you how to make some awesome looking ruins quickly and easily using an amazing new terrain building system called Slice and Slot. Stick around to the end of the video to see the finished product. For now however, we need to take a quick journey back through time. <sighs> time travel. What the f Who are you? I am one of the blueses. Though I have quite forgotten my name. Hey mate, you reckon you can send me back to mid-December? Wait, no, 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 no. Time travel, bro. Oh, that felt weird. Ah, it's the 17th of December, 2022. Perfect. I'm going to check the mail. So my buddy Albert from Microforge Minis and the Two Towers podcast has sent me this cheeky little package. I'm pretty excited to see what's inside, so let's crack into it. Foam, glorious foam. All nicely cut to... A good size and width for walls. Hmm, that's quite a bit of it too. Hello, got some cheeky templates by the looks. Well, you know what I really want to see. Right, very nice. And so, from what I understand, these just. Look at that. Fits nicely onto the foam. Produce some nice, easy little details. Look at that. It's got a nice little insert, which again, once you cut the shape roughly, look at that, you wouldn't even need to cut a curve because, well, a slight curve there, but you've got enough of a trough there to hide any imperfections. What a great idea. Man, that's going to speed things up. Some nice detailing. Oh man, these are awesome. I love it. Alright, this has arrived just in time for Christmas, so thank you very much, Albert, my own personal Santa Claus. I am very much looking forward to cracking into these and making some interesting looking um, Gondor themed buildings and ruins for Osgiliath. Very cool. I have a month before the Slice and Slot Kickstarter launch, so plenty of time to make something great. Then I got distracted by summer holidays here in beautiful New Zealand. And then of course, a bit of painting. Okay, so the Slice and Slot Kickstarter launches in a couple of days, and I really wanted to have a terrain piece ready in time for the launch. I only have a couple of days, so I'm going to go something simple. Tomorrow I was planning on filming a battle report between Angmar and the Rangers, and so this is a good opportunity to create a terrain piece especially for that. So I'm thinking an old ruined outpost of Arnor, almost completely overtaken and overgrown by the wilds. I really need to hurry up and get onto this. Thankfully, the slice and slot system allows you to make something that looks pretty cool uh, in very little time. So. Let's get straight into this, eh? The Scoromatic 10,000 is a simple MDF jig designed to fit 10mm thick sheets of foam snug. Then you can simply run your blade along the grooves. Slide the jig across to score along the length of the sheet. The great thing is once you've finished one side, you simply turn it over and repeat the process. The bricks will then line up perfectly on the edge. I then measure 20mm spaces for the brick pattern's vertical lines. This is really up to you how pedantic you want to be, as you could easily do this freehand. Use a hobby knife to score the vertical lines, being careful to keep to the running brick pattern. I found it hard to see where I had cut, so I went ahead and traced the cuts with a pencil, before cutting the rest of the pattern. Using a pencil on these cuts really brings out the look, and is such a satisfying part of the process. The stonework can then be textured by simply pressing a scrunched up ball of tin foil into the foam. Now's where the magic of Slice and Slot really comes in. Anyone who has carved foam will know that tackling things like archways and windows is tricky and time consuming. 
With these resin pieces however, all you have to do is cut a rough arch which is simple with the provided templates. Then they just slot into place. The groove hides any roughness from your cut and the brickwork matches the pattern of the foam perfectly. Genius! To create the windows I cut the bottom two rows of bricks before tracing the window space and cutting it out. Again the window piece simply slots into place. What I love about this system is that it allows you to be as creative as you want with your builds while simplifying the process. Now for my ruined outpost of Arnor I needed to destroy what I had built. Cut a jagged break with a hobby knife following the brick pattern in places so that they show on the edge. PVA glue is used to fix the slice and slot pieces onto the structure along with parts of the wall that were cut. Using pins can help a lot to keep the foam in position while the glue sets. The two walls are then fixed together using more PVA glue and I used a couple of the detailed architrave pieces to complete the look. To create a wooden upper floor, cut planks from a 6mm thick sheet of balsa wood. They can then be weathered by shaving chips off the edges which show up great when dry brushed. The balsa is roughed up with a wire brush to bring out the texture of worn timber. The beams are then snapped at the ends and glued onto the structure using a hot glue gun to create the floor's frame. The planks are made in much the same way but using popsicle sticks. I found they look better when halved because popsicle stick planks are a bit too wide at this scale. These are glued into place using the hot glue gun. The floor was textured using polyfiller and a textured roller, which I show in more detail on Miles Gilead's Ruin tutorial. Click the link in the top right corner. Next use your hot glue gun to fix the structure to an MDF base. Mine was 200mm square. The edges were tapered by shaving with a sharp blade before sanding smooth. Now it's time to add rubble and to texture the base with tile grout. I had lots of leftover bits that I had cast with plaster and my blue stuff moulds from my Osgiliath Ruin build which I fixed into place with the hot glue gun. Some smaller bits of gravel picked up from the side of the road are glued with PVA. Ordinarily I would wait for everything to set but I was in a rush so got to painting. After priming with brown followed by a pale sand colour the whole thing is dry brushed heavily with a light grey. This is followed by a light dry brush of white focusing on the raised areas. All the areas of wood were painted with wildwood contrast paint. Now comes the part that really brings it to life. By dabbing highly watered down paints and washes all over the stonework you will gradually build up a weathered and grimy look. Use a range of different colours, browns, yellows, greens and black. Each successive layer of wash will give the ruins more depth. My secret weapon in this build is this, De La Rowney Sapia Ink. Watered down and applied in streaks, this creates an awesome, warm, weathered look to the bricks which helps to bring it all together. Okay, so I've got four hours before this game, um, and this is where I'm up to. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. But I've still got a ways to go. I need to, well, I'm going to have to apply the tile grout now um, to try and give it some time to dry. Um, and then I can start adding flock and maybe just painting, fixing up a few little details and things like that. Um, so I need to get cracking. Four hours to go. Let's go. To apply the tile grout and soil mix, paint the areas you wish to cover with PVA. Then sprinkle the tile grout all over the areas of glue. Don't worry too much if this spills over onto the rubble as excess can be removed with an old paintbrush and it all adds to the grimy rundown look. Normally I would seal this in place before adding flock, but again I'm in a hurry, so flock it. I want this ruin to be well overgrown so I need a wide range of flocks. The aim of the game here is to try and emulate nature. Using flock is a bit like painting with powder and you should build the foliage up by starting with darker colours like fine turf weeds and highlight with lighter flocks such as fine turf burnt grass. Once your fine turf is applied, adding aggregates like Geek Gaming's City Rubble Base Ready adds more texture and realism. Next move to coarse turf to start building up thicker overgrowth around the rubble. To seal everything in place, first soak it in isopropyl alcohol. 
Then drench everything in matte sealant. Use a paper towel to reduce excessive pooling on the detailed areas. You will have to wait for the matte sealant to dry before moving on to the next step. To bring out the texture of the wooden floor, dry brush with Bane Blade Brown. Then apply a lighter dry brush of Carrick Stone, focusing on the edges. To add moss and lichen, use fine turf weeds mixed with PVA glue and paint this onto the stonework. I then did the same thing, but this time with fine turf yellow grass. To add vines and overgrowth, first dab Hobby Tack onto strategic points where you want it attached. You should wait for it to become clear and tacky. In the meantime, I scattered some leftover leaves that I made for my Gondor themed bases. For the vines, I used JTT Scenery Products Dry Vines. Press the vines you want firmly into the hobby tack until it grabs and holds. A pair of nail scissors are very good for trimming the verge. To complete the look, simply attach a variety of clump foliage onto the base with hot glue. Make sure to seal everything in place with matte sealant and you're done. I'm super impressed with Slice and Slot. I think it's a genius idea and should really bring people's terrain building up to the next level. I'm also really grateful to Albert for giving me the opportunity to try out his awesome new product. So make sure you check out his Kickstarter, Slice and Slot, and show him some love. I'll put a link in the description along with his Instagram. Also if you want to have a go at making this ruin, or anything similar, then check out the list of materials in the description. Also please consider purchasing your hobby supplies through our affiliate links, which are again linked in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell to avoid missing new releases. If you have any suggestions for the channel or would just like to say hi, then please drop a comment below. I love engaging with the community and it's great for my motivation to hear from all of you. Much love and good hobbying guys.